Hi, my name is Carmen. I'm 32. <clears throat> um, I was born and raised in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I've been here in East St. Louis for about 13 years. Uh, originally moved to O'Fallon, Illinois. Uh, graduated from O'Fallon Township High School in 2009. Uh, had my first daughter in 2013. She's 10. Um, and uh, I grew up with my mom, uh, no dad, grew up with my mom. Um, I've been out here in East St. Louis in the streets since my daughter was about seven. Um, kind of fell on some hard times, so been out here struggling, trying to make it for myself. Um, I plan on uh, going back to school, going to college, trying to make a way for myself and do something different for my daughter. Um, I just got to get my faith back and try to do better. What, what happened after high school that brought you to this situation right now? Like, what did you do after high school? Um, I was with my, I'm sorry. I was with my baby dad. Um, we, I don't know, we had plans on getting together and being together, but he ended up uh, going to jail. Um, so that r really made me depressed and I suffered postpartum depression with my daughter. So I wasn't able to raise her how I should by myself without him. And it's not her fault. She didn't ask to be here, but... Oh, no. I gotta do better. Do you have any family that can help you? I do. Do you reach out to them? Why not? Because um, I'm ashamed. <laughs> you should never be ashamed to reach out to your family. They love you. They, they care about you. They, they want the best for you. It's not safe out here, so what other than you being ashamed, what else prevents you from reaching out to your family? Um, I just don't I don't I don't think they'll be there. Have you tried? No. Okay, so you need to try. I do. It's not safe for you. You you're thirty two, you're on these streets and it's not safe out here. It's not right. safe for guys. Right. Where is your Where is your family? Uh, in Berkeley, Missouri. You need to reach out my to my mom. Is uh, she's basically raising my daughter for me, so I'm I'm gonna reach out to them and try to do better. You have to ask yourself what's more important: the streets or your daughter and your family? My daughter. Your daughter needs you. The dad is already incarcerated, mm -hmm. so. What is she doing if she doesn't have mom either? Okay. You have to think about what that's doing to her. And you have to reach out to your mom. And I don't know what the situation is. Is it a situation with your mom that you can't reach out? Hmm. Um, my mom, she, she just got kind of tired of me because I always run. Once I go home, I keep running and I'm a runner, but I can go back home, and I'm 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 gonna go to Berkeley soon. I'm gonna go back. What what caused you to be out here? Like, what has you? What has a hold on you? Actually, where you don't want to be attached to the family and your your love unit. Um, I've been struggling with an addiction. For how long? For twelve years. So since you were 20? Yes. Who introduced you to? My friend, Amber. What was the situation? Uh, again, I was going through some stuff with my baby daddy, and she was like, here, try this. And uh, I tried it, and at first I was like, oh, I'm not going to be addicted to this. 
But once I tried it, I got addicted and... Do you remember what it was? Uh, it was crack. And, and first of all, if she was a friend, she wouldn't introduce you to that. Right. Friends don't do that to friends. Misery loves company. And now you're dealing with an addiction 12 years later that has affected your whole life and it's basically put your life on pause. Yeah. And it's up to you to press the pause button to go back to doing what you're supposed to do to unpause everything. But you have that power and you have to use that power to get back to your daughter. Your daughter needs you. How old is your daughter? She's 10. Yes. She's about to be a teenager. Remember what it was like when you were growing up in O'Fallon as a teenager? Think about that. And you had your mom. I did. Where was your father? Uh, I have no idea. I never met my father. I never knew him. So, basically, you're out here by choice. You're not out here because you don't have anywhere to go. Right. And it's up to you to get tired. So when do you feel like you'll be tired of being out here? It's cold out here. Like where do you, where do you go for, for um, shelter at nighttime? Um, I have a, I have a couple friends that. But are those friends also enabling you with your addiction? Uh, some of them. So are they friends? No. A, a friend would tell you, to get back to your daughter and clean your act up. And I know that that's easier said than done, but you can't be out here. It's not, it's, this is no place for you. you. You have a place to go. You have people that love you. They're just waiting on you to get it together. Yeah. And it's up to you. Your daughter needs you and you need her. You need that love unit. I know you, you got depressed with your baby daddy, but it's nothing you can do about it. Whatever situation he's in, he has to deal with that. And you and your daughter have to deal with each other out here and you have to make sure she doesn't go down the wrong path. You have to make sure she doesn't have friends, quote unquote, that'll introduce her to bad things. Right. So did you grow up in church? Did you go to church growing up? Um, I did go to church. The reason I asked you because you said something about having faith and, you know, you have to get your faith back. Yeah, I just lost a lot of faith because I'd be like, why would God put me through this? But, yeah, I'm going to go back. He gives the strongest that. test to the strongest people. And you have to understand that you're being tested right now. And your test really isn't as difficult as you're making it out to be. You're the one that's making it hard. Right. All you have to do is... Hey, I'm through with this. I'm going to Berkeley. Have you ever had a job? Yes. What happened with your job? Uh, I stopped going once I started getting checks. So basically you were working just to get the checks to feed the addiction. Mm hmm Okay, so when do we get when do we get tired of the addiction and start wanting to be a mother, start wanting to be a daughter, and start wanting to get back in society where we're needed? because they need you. Yeah. I mean, these people out here, they don't need you. They just, they're just using you. They're just facilitating whatever toxic behavior that you want to indulge in. Those are not friends. A friend to tell you you need to go back home. And if a friend doesn't tell you that, I wouldn't consider them a friend because a friend would want to see the best for you and your daughter. Mm -hmm. So how can you call them friends if they know that you have a daughter and you have a place to stay but you're sleeping on my floor, you're sleeping in my basement and we're getting high together, but you have people that need you and love you. How are they friends? Think about it. Right. How can you consider that a friend? Your mom is your friend, your daughter is your friend. You, you need to go back home. You seriously need to go back home. You don't need, you're in East St. Louis. You, you, your mom them in Berkeley. You need to be where you're safe and you need to make a decision on what's more important, the streets or my baby, because your baby needs you. Your baby needs you to tell you all the things that your mom or dad didn't tell you growing mm -hmm. up. Because think about, you've been out here for 12 years. You have a lot of experience that you can tell her so she can avoid that. You can give her that cheat code. But if you don't, 
you basically telling her it's okay to be out here too. And that ain't cool. Right. So, what's the plan? Um, I'm gonna go and call my mom today and talk to her. Man, and yes. try to go home and get into some rehab. The, 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 the best rehab is love and loving yourself. You have to love yourself and you have to understand that you have a daughter that needs love too. And what if she seeks the false love that you're seeking? You, you wouldn't like that. That'll eat you up even more. Yeah. Because basically, you telling her it's cool. Oh, it's cool. You don't have to be at home. You, you don't have to listen to nobody. You don't have to follow no rules. Just get out on the street. That ain't cool for her. That's not fair for her. And then the cycle continues. When, when do we break the cycle? Now. I appreciate that. You, you're going to call her? When you going to call her? Um, as soon as I get in, I'm going to use, use my phone and call her. I'm going to make a call today because you woke me up today. I appreciate you sharing with us, Ms. Corman. But the, the, the focus and the, and the basis of this is to understand that the streets don't love you. And if you have people, if you're blessed enough to have people that, that haven't given up on you and they still have open arms and an open door, it's up to you to walk through it, but you gotta walk through it the right way so you can stay there. You can't run away from, you got a baby. Right. And it's, think about how hard it is out here for you and think about what your baby going through too. Wondering where her mother is, wondering, your mom wondering when she gonna get a call about you being, you don't want that. You, you wearing everybody for nothing. You don't even have to be out here. You come from a good home. You grew up in O'Fallon. Yeah. You graduated. Yeah. So if there's anything you want to say to anybody who may be looking for you, worried about you, wondering if you're okay, now's the time to say it. Um, I love you guys, and I'm okay. And just please keep praying for me. But, Mom, I'm going to call you today and reach out. Thank you. Mm -hmm.